Hello all, welcome to OurTrainings.com. In this session, we'll discuss about how do we upload a file to object storage as well as how do we display the list of buckets as well as objects which are available in object storage of OCI. So let's see the steps involved. We'll be discussing all these particular six steps. And the first one is the OCI user, which is a prerequisite for our Oracle Apex demo, which we would like to connect with object storage of OCI. You require four credentials, user ID, tenant ID, fingerprint, and public key. And how do we get it? Yeah. So once you navigate to the OCI infrastructure of Oracle Cloud, you just click on your user account, my profile, tokens, and keys. And you can click on add API keys if you don't have any of the API key available, or else you can use the existing one. And based on that, you get the the four keys which we mentioned in the initial step the user id tenant id fingerprint and the public key. and the once you have these particular oci tokens and keys you need to configure the workspace web credentials and this is the second step you can go to the apex workspace click on web credentials and provide click on create and you need to provide authentication type as oci new native authentication user id tenancy id oci public key fingerprint as well as the name and static ID. So this is the static ID name which we'll be using in the AP public uh, PLC call API, which we provide when we provide when we perform the upload file. And the next one is creation of a REST data source, and the navigation for creation of data source will be you have to click on application, shared component, and REST data source. And the fourth one will be creating a shared list of value, which will be under the application shared component list of value. And the fifth one. Where and we'll be using the global variables. This will be available at the application level. Application, you have to click on application definition. And once you click on application definition, click on substitution. You provide the information like a G base URL, G OCI web credential, and provide this information. So, where and we'll be using these properties and our PLC call API for the purpose of uploading the file. And the final six step is wherein we'll be creating a pages and the first page to list the buckets as well as objects which are available in the OCI. And the last one is to upload the objects in the selected bucket. So this is the initial page wherein it will display the list of buckets, list of objects. And the next one is which will provide an option to upload the file. So let us see the demo of this one. So the first thing is what we require is the web credentials you click on apex application and click on the app builder and click on click on app builder and then click on workspace utilities web credentials i'll show you the existing one which i already created the name is oci access and i renamed it to static id also same as name so that you can consider the appropriate one oci user id oci tenancy id as well as public key and also authentication type should be oci native authentication so this is the initial configuration at the workspace level now let us create the oracle apex application now so i'll say oci object storage demo with apex so click on create and the next thing is will require to create a shared data sources, REST data sources. I'll click on shared components, click on REST data sources. The first one is a bucket REST data source. So select from scratch, click on next. And here the authentication type should be OCI, buckets, RDS, and the end point should be this one. So wherein we'll use for the list, listing the bucket, click on next, click on next. Authentication required, yes, and select the credential as OCI authentication, OCI access. This is our web credential name, which we selected in the initial step. And in the advanced property, you need to make sure that you mention the compartment ID. This is a thing you have to get it. Let's go with static and discover, right? So once this is done, this almost completed successfully. So next is buckets is done. And the next one is objects RTS. So I'll just select OCI and this is objects RDS rest data source and this is a url for the object storage uh, providing the list of 
list of objects which are available in my bucket. So here I'm providing the bucket name as a dynamic one. So that is the reason I selected it as colon bucket name, which I have to pass the value at runtime. So here, what I'll do is I'll just mention one of the existing bucket name. So one of the existing bucket name I have is the bucket name itself is object storage. And then click on next. Click on next. And you're required to set a couple of properties now. Very important one, authorization type, OCI authentication, OCI access, and click on advance. And the bucket name, I'll pass it at runtime. So this should not be static. And there is one more property I have to set, query string. And here, the property name is fields. And there are three values I would like to mention for name size MD5 and uh, created. So this is static. And then uh, you just click on discover. If at all, if it works successfully, our REST data source is perfect. So we are able to retrieve the four columns from the REST data source. Click on create REST data source. So creation of the REST data source, but two things are done. One is objects and the other one is buckets. So I'll we'll click on shared component and we'd like to create a list of value which we'll be using for the buckets. Click on create from scratch. LOV underscore buckets, which is dynamic. And data source should be REST source and I'll select buckets RDS. Click on next and we'll select have we'll have only we would like to have only two values name and name click on create so this step completed our creation of list of value and now click on application wherein we'll be creating the pages click on create page blank page list buckets objects page okay so in this page, we have to display the buckets as well as objects. So let us do that. Click on body, create a page item, and here, list buckets, and this will be a select list. And here, we scroll down, select the shared component which we selected, which we created just now. The shared component and the list of value LOV buckets, right? And the next one is a create, re click on create a region, and this is a static, now this is a classic classic report and this classic report will be a rest data source this is based on our object rds and wherein we need to pass a parameter right what is the parameter we have to pass the buckets name so click on parameter and click on bucket name and here this value is based on an item and that is nothing but our p2 list bucket so select p2 list buckets so the bucket name will be passed out to this classic report at runtime and then it will display the list of objects which are available in that particular bucket. So let's run the page now. Okay. So, and yep, nothing is getting displayed because there is a submit action missing here. Click on bucket and just select the action here. Should be submit. Yeah, now let's run it. So list bucket, click on object storage. Perfect, so we are able to display the list of objects which are available in a selected bucket. So select the BICC bucket. Let us see how many files, it has only three files. And if you see the object storage bucket, I have around 10 files, okay? So now the initial page is done. Next page is the real one, I mean the very important one, wherein we'll create a page to upload the files, okay? So now I'll just click on application, click on create page, and I'll say upload files. So so the assumption is we have to get the bucket name from the previous page. So I'll just create, click on create page item and I'll say bucket name and let it be like this and then click on create page item and this will be a file upload one. I'll say p3 underscore file Right, so these are two things. And here the property is like this only, type is table Apex application. And now we'll create an upload button. Click on create a button. And let's say upload file.
you can make it as hot and now we'll create a dynamic action or a process either way so what we require is this is the upload script i'll be using here and here if you observe i'm using an api called make wrist required make wrist request which is available in the apex web service which require four parameters the first one is the url of the object storage next one is a method which is a put and the next one is a blob content and the fourth one is a credential the static id right these are four things and here i'm getting the blob content as well as the we are getting the blob content as well as a file name from this apex application temp files and here it is pro i'm providing the input called file name and one more important thing is here we are passing the base url which we create in the web credentials one and the other one is the bucket name which will be passing to this one at runtime okay so now just see the parameters the one first one is p3 bucket name yes fine and then other one is p3 underscore file check the file yes this is one so copy the script and here what you can do is so click on create process and i'll say upload process and i just mentioned here try to validate the code successful and here i can also mention uploaded successfully error y uploading and then what you do is you have a submit option and upload Yeah, action is submit page okay and then what we require and then in the previous page the second page right wherein you require to create a button to navigate to the upload files page okay so what i'll do is i'll just create a page I'll create a button this is a classic report right so here in this one you create a page button create a button and this is upload file or invoke upload file page and this one redirect to page in this application you navigate to the page third page upload files page and you need to pass the bucket name pass the bucket name okay so this is a bucket name parameter in third page and we are passing the value p2 list buckets okay let's try okay i'll select the bucket name as bicc bucket and click on upload file it has to navigate to the upload files page and here i'll choose the file let's say yeah so copper bottle the bicc upload file so it says error while uploading let's see so make sure this you have the proper information okay let me try for the other bucket what i'll do is i'll just try for this other bucket object storage upload file and here choose the file maybe I'll select some yeah okay still we are getting an error something wrong in this one only but let us try to try to validate so here this base url and this is a p3 file let me check that once i'll go to third page so p3 is a file file upload this is a process check the path of the object storage that could be a mistake just check it once so i think i have not defined the application definition right that's the issue 
So click on application definition. Yeah, that's a mistake. So what we do is click on base URL. And the base URL of is before B, right? So this is the one without any slash. So copy this. That's it. So you don't require the other one. Base URL is fine. Yeah, let's try. So click on list object storage again. And here, yeah, maybe I'll select BICC bucket, which has only three files. Click on upload file. It navigates to the upload file page, choose file. And I'll just upload this again, copper bottle. Let's upload. Yeah, it uploaded successfully. And you can just go back to the objects, um, this list object page. And let's see, right? You are able to see this one, which was created just now. Let's try the other one, object storage. And here I have 10 files. I'll click on upload file. I'll choose a file. Yeah, I'll just choose hello mango, upload. And I click on this list object storage. And yeah, right. So we got we got uploaded this file just now. So this is how we can have an invocation of an object storage or upload the file using Apex APIs. Okay, thank you.